What if I told you there's a supplement that's safe, natural, inexpensive, and more importantly, backed by decades of research that could help you maintain muscle mass, keep your brain sharp, and boost your energy well into your later years. And no, it's not some new fad or pill or secret potion. It's actually something your body already produces every single day by itself. I'm talking about creatine, a nutrient often thought of as kind of a gym bro supplement, but in reality, it's actually one of the most powerful tools available for longevity, vitality, and independence as you age. And that's why many experts are starting to call creatine the longevity supplement. Now, before we dive into all the details around creatine, if you're new here, welcome to The Unretired, where you're not done, but you're finally doing what you want. If you want more science-backed tips to live longer, sharper, stronger, and more vibrant in retirement, please hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. All right, let's start at the beginning. What actually is creatine? Creatine is a naturally occurring compound made in your liver, kidneys, and pancreas. Your body stores it mostly in your muscles with smaller amounts also in your brain. Creatine's job is really simple, but totally crucial. It helps recycle ATP. That's the molecule your cells use for energy. So think of ATP as a battery pack for every cell in your body. And when you need to lift something or climb stairs or even think quickly, your body taps into ATP. Creatine helps recharge those batteries, giving your muscles and brain a constant supply of quick energy. So while creatine's in your body, you also get it from foods like red meat and fish. But unless you're eating a lot of them daily, supplementation is often the easiest way to reach the optimal levels of having the right amount of creatine in your body. So now you're asking, why should anybody, even if they're in their 20s or 30s, care about creatine? Well, because it does far more than just help athletes lift heavier weights. Research shows creatine supports strength and performance by improving the energy available for your muscles, but it's also about recovery and repair, helping muscles bounce back faster and recover. Brain function too is another thing, especially in memory and processing speed. And of course, overall energy efficiency by making your cells much more resilient in recovery. So in short, creatine isn't just about building biceps. It's about giving your entire body and brain more fuel to perform better. So next, let's talk about why it matters so much for seniors. As we get older, two big challenges emerge. First is the loss of muscle mass, and the second is cognitive decline. Okay, first let's talk about muscle mass and independence. After about age 40, most people start losing muscle mass at a rate of up to one to 2% per year. This condition is called sarcopenia. Left unchecked, it leads to weakness, frailty, and much higher risk of falls and fractures. Creatine helps slow this loss by fueling your muscles during both exercise and just everyday activities. And paired with even light resistance training, like bands, light weights, or body weight movements, creatine helps seniors build and maintain lean muscle. And more muscle doesn't just look better. It protects your bones, it stabilizes your joints, and it helps you stay active and independent longer. Next, let's talk about the cognitive function and your brain health. Creatine isn't just for muscles, as we've talked about. It literally powers your brain. Studies show it can improve your memory, attention, mental processing speed, and more. For older adults, this means sharper thinking, better focus, and possibly even some protection against age-related cognitive decline. In fact, when researchers gave creatine to older adults in clinical trials, they often saw improvements not just in their strength, but also in their mental performance. And that's why many people are now seeing creatine as a dual-action longevity supplement, protecting both your body and mind. Next up is energy and vitality. Beyond muscles and memory, creatine often often helps with just simple day-to-day -day energy levels. Seniors frequently report feeling less fatigued and more capable of enjoying activities, whether that's gardening, traveling, or even just playing with the grandkids. Now, before we go any further, let's clear up some of the common myths and misconceptions about creatine. Okay, myth number one, creatine is a steroid. Wrong, totally 
wrong and false. Creatine is a hormone. It's not a steroid and it's not a drug. It's a naturally occurring substance that's found in your body and in the foods that we eat. So taking it as a supplement is simply increasing the levels of something that your body already produces. Myth number two, creatine is dangerous for your kidneys or liver. Now this is one of the oldest myths and it's been completely debunked by decades of research. Study after study has shown creatine is safe for healthy adults even when taken for years. So if you have existing kidney disease, of course, you should check with your doctor. But for most seniors, creatine is one of the safest supplements that you can take. I personally take it every day. Myth number three is creatine only helps young athletes. Not true at all. In fact, some of the strongest benefits have been seen in older adults because as you age, the consequences of low muscle mass and low energy are just simply much greater than when you're young. So creatine gives you the boost that your body needs to stay active and independent. Myth number four, if I don't exercise much, creatine won't help me much. Also false. Now, while it works best when combined with resistance training or some other types of exercise, the research shows that creatine still provides energy and cognitive benefits, even for people who aren't exercising intensely. So whether you're lifting weights three times a week or you know, you're just walking daily, creatine will help you. All right, we're halfway through, so I'd love to hear from you now. What's your biggest health priority as you age? Is it building muscle, or is it keeping your mind sharp, or just having more energy day to day? Drop the answer in the comments. I read everyone, and your responses help shape these videos, and they just might help somebody else too. All right, let's get back into this, how to use creatine safely. So when we talk about how much creatine to take, here's what the current evidence and research suggests, and also a few things that are experimental. The daily dose of five grams of creatine monohydrate is widely considered a good sweet spot for most adults including seniors. Taking more than five grams a day consistently may be a little bit counterproductive. Excess creatine is converted to creatine and excreted, so extra beyond what your body can naturally process doesn't necessarily give more benefit. Very high doses increase the load on your kidneys, especially if you already have some sort of compromised kidney function. And this is why going far above five grams regularly is typically discouraged in healthy individuals. There's just not a lot of benefit. Now, that said, in cognitive brain-oriented research, especially in older adults and seniors and you know, pathological conditions, some researchers are exploring much higher doses. Let's talk 20 grams a day, but they're splitting that 20 grams, let's say across four or five gram doses throughout the day to try and push more creatine into the brain. It's not for the muscles, but it's really about the brain. But those are early stage trials and they're not standard guidance. In fact, one Alzheimer's pilot study used 20 grams a day of creatine for eight weeks in people ages 60 to 90 and found that it was feasible, well tolerated, and it resulted in an 11% increase in brain creatine levels. That's pretty amazing, actually. Some other research suggests that high dose protocols, let's say over 20 grams a day, may more reliably elevate brain creatine over time. Though the long term effects, optimal durations, and safety in older adults, they remain a little uncertain. Again, this research is being done as we speak. Now, the flip side is there's other dose response studies that found that 10 grams a day or even 20 grams a day for six weeks did not reliably improve cognitive performance in their sample. Now because of that mixed evidence, here's the practical approach. Just start with five grams a day. That amount has the best balance of safety, evidence, and more importantly, simplicity. It's just simple to do. Second, if a clinician or a researcher wants you to experiment with, let's say, higher dosing for cognitive benefit, well, they might suggest trying to split the doses as we talked about before. So let's say you're doing 20 milligrams, that would be five milligrams spaced out through the day four times rather than just one giant dose. Third, we always are going to monitor and reassess whatever we're experimenting with. So if any kidney concerns or side effects appear, obviously you're going to revert to the lower dose and you're going to consult with your healthcare provider or the clinician. And fourth, until more robust long-term trials are done in seniors, the five gram baseline is the responsible evidence-based research. I mean, this is literally backed up by decades of research. And so I feel pretty good about recommending that. Another thing I like about creatine is that it's super easy to take. It's totally tasteless. It dissolves in the liquid. So you can mix it right into a glass of water even, stir it into your morning coffee, tea, or blend it with a protein shake. You can even drop it into a sports drink. The key here is simply taking it 
it every day in whatever fits the most easily into your routine and your diet. I personally take about five grams late in the morning before I work out, usually stirred right into my coffee and protein shake. And honestly, I can't taste a single thing. I mean, it doesn't taste like anything. It mixes so smoothly, it's basically invisible, which makes it easy to take every single day without any issues at all. Let's step back and put this all together now. Why should seniors and retirees seriously consider supplementing with creatine? Simply because it directly addresses the two biggest challenges of aging, and that again is muscle decline and cognitive decline. Number one, muscle decline, which leads to weakness, falls, and loss of independence, and two, cognitive decline, which leads to memory problems and basically a reduced quality of life. So creatine supports both of the challenges associated with this. It's like an insurance policy for your muscles and your mind. Another bonus is it's very affordable, it's widely available, and as I've said multiple times now, it's totally safe. Unlike many supplements that promise the world with little evidence, creatine has literally been studied for decades with thousands of participants, and that's why it earns the title title, the longevity supplement. So the next time you hear creatine mentioned, don't just think bodybuilders or athletes. Think of it as a tool for anyone who wants to age better, stay stronger, and keep their brain sharp. The net net is if you're in your 50s, 60s, or 70s, or even beyond. Creatine may be one of the simplest and most powerful steps that you can take to protect your independence, energy, and your quality of life. Because longevity isn't just about living longer, it's about living better. All right, thanks for watching The Unretired. Every week, we bring you fresh insights on health, mindset, and lifestyle after 60. So if you found this helpful, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button and share it with a friend who might be able to benefit from this. Because living in retirement isn't by chance, it's by choice.